and welcome back to the channel. It's me, Admiral Pegasus, with another Star Trek Fleet Command video. And today we're going to be looking, well, it's going to be a quick look at the 12 speciality ships. Yes, we have 12 in the game. What we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look today and then I'm going to split them down into individual episodes coming up. Hopefully releasing roughly one a week, providing time allows in my life. So, let's crack on with the first one then, shall we? Oh, look at that. Well, <laughs> I don't know if the editing works on that one, but here's our first ship that we're going to quickly look at. Released at Shipyard 17, it is the USS Franklin. This is a ship that was designed to um, fight the Swarm, originally released in Star Trek Beyond, and it was brought into the game as a Swarm Killer, and here's its stats on the side. I'll just let you read them as I prattle on. So... Yeah, brought in, it was made to for, um, fight the swarm. As you can see from the description and also the pop up that I've just had, it increases weapon damage against it by 4,800%. It is a nice big increase. There's this warp range and input speed. It's, yeah, it's an okay speed ship, really. But this is the, um, where we go to farm these swarm ships. A whole load of new systems were put in. So the map was, re it was, I think it was actually one of the first rearrangers of the map, actually, to be honest. Um, and all the um, systems you can see have got this like light coloured cloud around them. And that is where the swarm um, actually live. There's a little one here called Redmond. Um, unfortunately, I don't quite click on it. Um, so just watch out, it's a level 28 system and then obviously them. Now, this was another ship that was introduced and it's, it's released at Shipyard 18. It is the Botany Bay. This was released during the Augment arc. Um... And it was brought in to mine data. As you can see up above, corrupted and decoded data increases the mine speed by 26,500%. Ooh, it is a bloody fast miner. I will say that, a very fast miner. Especially when it's properly crewed out properly. And another thing as well, we will uh, when we do the episodes for this, I will endeavour to put the correct crews on these as well. And I've also found a couple of extra... Um, here you go, I'm doing the pop-up now. <laughs> um, I'm, I found an extra crew which mines a lot faster than the crew this thing originally came out with. And I will tell you, it's the Ferengi. Here's the Uber. <laughs> yes, it is literally called the Uber in the game. Now, well, it's actually called USS Discovery as per. But, obviously, it's an Uber. And it's designed to also mine Mycelium, another new um, bunch of systems brought in and um, a new material to mine. Increases the mine speed, uh, by, uh, harvests, shall we say, uh, 1,860% better than any other ship. And it is a fast mine. It is very, very fast. Um, mine's maxed out. And I will tell you this. Um, I can send my Horizon with a, a, a crewed out ship, similar to the, what I would crew the <laughs> Botany Bay out with. But I can send the Horizon to mine my ceiling a lot faster than this thing can. And mine's tier 9. So... Um, I'm going to quickly show you another metric is the Discovery was also designed to jump between systems using this mycelium. You have to refine it to make it cultivated mycelium so it could do this. And I also love this next caption that I, I to be honest, I, whenever I do a recall, I love watching this caption. Oh yes, that is a caption. Next up is the turd. Released at oh, um, Shipyard 23. This was another thing brought in when an, another material was, oh, another special resource was brought in for us to mine. And that was Latinum. <clears throat> and this thing can mine it at an impressive rate, so don't try to put anything else on it. And, and it's there. 12,000% mining bonus when mining raw Latinum. A, a very good miner. No questions about it. And again, I'm going to bring up the stats here. For you to have a look at, obviously these are base, but they are also subject to my particular research. So this is what it will be released for me. If you do want to know what they will be released at, I would probably recommend that you go try um, stfc.com, courtesy of Ripper, who's actually put it all together. Next up is our Shipyard 25 vessel, mining vessel is the Meridian. This again was also brought in to mine another specialised um node of isogen you've got three different isogens one two and three all different size nodes and it is basically a, a severely up 
modified horizon basically it's got the three um, cargo bits at the back it's got its warp engines which have been moved backwards <coughs> and instead of being cylindrical they're actually more yeah rectangular so and then it's got all these fancy drill bits in the front i think it was when the designers made this it was designed to um i, I think they wanted to make it look like a bit like a, a an old-fashioned miner really um but yeah, it mines the isogen, which is contained in Origin Space. This was brought in when Terra Taurus was released. Also, there is um, some isogen 1 systems in Rogue Space as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know what much else I can say about the Meridian, really. Um, obviously, the oh, it's, um, details are there. It's things, if you obviously read in that... Um, but this is the one, this is the baby, this is the one that we all want and that we all love. It's the Vidar, again released at Shipyard 25. This thing was brought in to fight the Borg Tactical Probes which was brought in during the Borg arc and it was the first time Scopely tried to do an arc. This increases damage against those probes by 24,000 out the box and it is a bloody good ship. It's also best known for its OPC hunting abilities. Yes, because this thing has a massive cargo bay, capable of going out. It is literally, effectively, a warship that can actually go kill miners and take their cargo. So, this is what I primarily use when I'm OPC hunting. As you can see there, out of the box, 16,000 cargo. Quite impressive. Protected cargo, I'm not particularly that bothered about. But, yeah... There is a refinery with this as well, which gives which gives our independent credits and faction credits and faction reputation as well. But we will cover that in the the dark video. As you can see, I've got fifty blueprints here, so which means I'm on my way to going for a second, which I am going to do because I fully expect to have a Vidar A being released into the game at some point. My theory is it might turn up during the Voyager arc because the Borg but um, were predominant from seasons three through seven join voyager um so i'm thinking that ma they may do that I i'm most likely wrong but you never know with scopely you really never know what is coming around the corner but yeah <clears throat> good little ship put this with your um to crew this i would highly recommend is your um cargo capacity crew Next up is the most versatile ship in the game, designed to be scrapped and rebuilt over and over again, and it's the Stella. As you can see here, it's designed to attack specific hostiles, the Eclipse hostiles, and exchange armadas as well, located in purple space. And it's designed as well to give you particles when you scrap it at a max, well, from a certain um, level, you really want to get this up to level 45, tier 9. It's the, be the best payout in particles. And that will work towards your M number. The higher your M number, the better your Stellar is. Mine's a tier 6 at the minute. It has been scrapped a couple of times and rebuilt. I've got one waiting to be rebuilt. And I would highly recommend that you do have at least two of these. One that's constantly upgrading and scrapping. And another one that's actually doing the work. Is the workhorse. <clears throat> but this, this came in during the Rogue event, I believe. When we was introduced to Rogue Space and the Eclipse Hostiles. Like I said, a very versatile ship. Designed to be scrapped and rebuilt over and over again. Just to help with your research. But again, we will cover that in a video. I have actually done a, a brief stellar video. Which was in the um, Daily Grind series. Which I did a couple of months ago. So please do go check that video out if you want some more information on it. But this is where the um, stellar goes. These are all your exchange and murder systems. That purple space is more where I think um, the hostiles are. Um, this system here is where your mycelium is. There's level 23 systems and level 28 systems. All containing hostiles which pay out in my um, the raw mycelium as well. And then next up is all the Borg systems. Because obviously I forgot to go through all these when I did it. So I really should have redone this video before I actually put it on. Because then I wouldn't have got... Um, yeah... But it shows what happens when you actually record videos and you put the uh, things. Next up, well, I, I don't know what to say about this. The, the, the Bermemia is the sarcophagus ship. <sighs> this was brought in for takeovers. 
uh, you stick it on a capture node and it increases damage by 86,000% when it's actively defending the node. And as the description also clearly states, it can also do it on mining nodes. Why you put this thing on a mining node, I really do not know. Unless you really... Actually, you could probably use this to hold your nodes. Send it out there to hold your node. I never thought about that one. That is worth a look. I think I will look into that one actually, but as you can see it starts here. Um, but yeah, this is where you put it on one of these and uh, when somebody comes to attack you, it increases it attack stats by 86,000%. Because other than that, it is no warship, it, it, it's crap. This thing's a hell of a lot better and this is a, this is a mishmash or whatever. This was the Packlid's Amalgam or as it came to commonly known as the Big Mama. This thing is a base raiding ship, pure and simple. As you can see, after winning a battle, if the target has more resources than what the amalgam can hold, it fills its cargo space and takes an additional 0.01% of whatever's left. So, yeah, the, it's, it's not much of a fighter, it's not much of a miner, it is purely to raid bases. Literally, that is the way it was designed. And that is the way players actually use it. And when I finally get it, as you can see, I'm on 48 here. I'm actually now up to 56, I believe. Yeah, 56 blueprints. So, which means I will have the amalgam by the end of the month, one way or another. Um, but yeah, it was it's a, it's a mishmash of um, different stuff. There's different ship parts in it. But again, we will just see if we can identify certain things from it as when I do the video for it. Um... But yeah, it's design. Um, what was it? Uh, if I can just pick out, it's a unique profitable of the amalgam is due to its fusion of components from various types of ships found across the quadrants. Elements of Klingon Federation and Romulan ship parts are merged with salvage from various other worlds. Uh, the so yeah, that is it. Now this was our first upgrade to the Franklin. Is the Franklin A? This was brought in to fight bigger swarms, and as you can see up there, its damage is increased by 3,500 uh, 3, percent. Let's let's forget that decimal place. Why it's actually near the description, I don't know. But like I said, this was an upgrade to the Franklin, the Franklin A, designed to do, uh, beat the higher level armadas. Uh, uh, not armadas. There are swarm armadas, but the higher level swarm that we have to fight starting at level 37 i will show you the systems in just a moment but obviously i've brought up the um, details and what uh, yeah yeah you know so uh was it the franklin has been custom built to combat the swarm threats so there you go to be honest they're not much of a threat these swarms have got absolutely no shields. But again, that's another thing we can actually show you in the videos. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to merge both the Franklin and the Franklin A videos together. Might be an idea. I don't know. It will cut down the number of videos. But I hope we'll have to see because the Franklin video is due to be coming out roughly about a week after this video. So these are the high level systems. Now, this is the second upgrade we got. This is the Golden Turd. Yes, it is the Golden Turd. This was Quark's pride and joy. Anybody who went through the glorious Ferengi arc in February and March 2022. Hmm. Bonus, 35,000% 35, uh, 35, bonus for mining concentrated latinum. Now, <clears throat> what I can tell you about this ship is how crap it is at mining raw latinum. It's got the same type of mining laser, a DX. The only problem is the Devore has a DX100. This has a DX2000. It's 20 times better. But yet, yeah, it's absolutely crap. I, I would use the S word, but I'm not allowed on YouTube. It is absolutely crap when it comes to mining um, raw latinum. So, yeah, don't put it on that. And then finally... Cerritos, most recently released in the Lower Decks R. This is our very first support ship. Comes with a bit of research as well. And as you can see, when the Cerritos uh, supports on the ship, it increases the support duration by 5 seconds. It starts out, I think it's around about 3 minutes. I don't know, but as you can see, I've got 50 blueprints. Actually, now I've got 60. Because like I said, by the time of this was recorded, I only had 
um, what was blueprints are displayed on screen. Um, I'm not sure what it's like as a combat ship. I've not actually seen anybody using it as a combat ship as a yet, but that's neither here nor there. This is a support ship, pure and simple. You send it out, you can support your allies, support your alliance. Hell, you can support your enemy. Yes, you can support your enemy. Hmm. It might bring back the old um, saying of my enemy's, my enemy's enemy is my best friend. So, maybe you got two warring alliances, you're at war with one of them, so they're fighting on two fronts. So you might, and there's another one, and you're thinking, yeah, maybe I want to go help them, go kick their butts. Who knows? But, yeah. Now, the one thing is this, it, like I said, there is some research to go with this. Whatever research you have done, if somebody with some research comes to support you, it's based on your research, not theirs. So please bear that in mind. It is a California class starship. It was designed for second class, uh, second contact and support missions of fed various Federation vessels through first contact and various other different stuff. It had a weird and wacky crew on board. Not a typical Starfleet, I'll tell you that for straight out. I mean, I did not watch Lower Decks until this arc, the Lower Decks arc came out. I did find it enjoyable. It was, it was weirdly entertaining and sort of very disturbing at the same time but that is the support ships let me know what you think in the comment section down below also don't forget to like this video the more likes we get the further this video spreads and also don't forget to subscribe as well so you know when i'm releasing future content also don't forget to share with your alliance and your server and anyone else so let's get this video spread so until then this is admiral pegasus saying good night and live long and prosper. Goodbye.